Thank you, Chairman McCall, for convening today's hearing. Uh, thank you, Ranking Member uh, Thompson, for joining us. Uh, as a former district attorney in Massachusetts, I've witnessed firsthand the devastating effects of drug-related crimes and violence on entire families, communities, nations, and for the purposes of this hearing, commonwealths and states as well. In Massachusetts, 1.7 people die per day from opiate-related overdoses. And with each new drug parcel crossing into our borders, hundreds more uh, individuals will become addicted. For this reason, it's important to understand that the drug trade has a global reach. Often in the media, on this committee, and even in the administration, there's a heavy focus on immediate borders to the north and, of course, to the south. The truth is that there's no distance too far or hurdle too high for drug traffickers. While supply and demand for drugs remain steady, the ingenuity and wealth of smugglers increase and the federal dollars to fight this phenomenal uh, uh, enterprise decrease. Yet, whether you're in Bourne, Massachusetts, San Juan, Puerto Rico, Juarez, Mexico, Praia, Cape Verde, the face of despair following the loss of a loved one to drug violence or addiction remains the same. For this reason, I welcome this hearing's focus away from the usual association between drugs and the southwest border. The Caribbean is home to two U.S. territories, Puerto Rico and the U.S. Virgin Islands. This is not an issue affecting a foreign nation. It is instead one that has significant consequences for the 4 million American <coughs> citizens who live in Puerto Rico and the nearly 110,000 that live in the U.S. Virgin Islands. This is an issue that requires a comprehensive strategy, yet the Homeland Security resources, equipment, and personnel that are deployed to those areas are not on a par with the other parts of the United States with less challenging circumstances. It's often noted that the main point of entry for drugs into the U.S. is through, Central, is through the Central American Corridor not the Caribbean-Florida corridor. Yet the resources dedicated to Miami, the entry point from the Caribbean, far outweigh what is deployed in Puerto Rico. For example, there are currently twice as many ICE Homeland Security investigation agents in Miami than in Puerto Rico. There are almost five times the number of Customs and Border Patrol field operation officers assigned to Miami than Puerto Rico. And although the Coast Guard interdicted over 1,700 pounds of cocaine in Puerto Rico from January 2009 to August 2011, and none in Miami during the same time frame, the Coast Guard office in San Juan has to rely on assets from Miami to reinforce their fleet. Moreover, Miami has a population of 400,000, while Puerto Rico has a population of nearly 4 million. Certainly the efforts undertaken in Miami are laudable, but for comparison's sake, this disparity clearly shows that Puerto Rico lacks the federal attention warranted by uh, the crime rate, the population, and the drug trade. <clears throat> On the Commonwealth level, I'm concerned about the allegations of widespread systemic uh, corruption and abuse occurring in the Puerto Rican Police Department. According to a scathing 143-page findings letter by the Department of Justice, it is, quote, is an agency in profound disrepair, unquote. Furthermore, a recent report, uh, as recent as last Tuesday, as a follow-up to the DOJ uh, investigation, indicated that these, quote, these abuses did not represent isolated incidents or aberrant behavior by a few rogue officers. It is rather, quote, pervasive and systematic, uh, and it's island-wide, and it's ongoing. Yet federal agents, through numerous Caribbean-based task force and interagency agreements, have to work in partnership with the Puerto Rican Police Department and their officers in matters affecting our homeland security. I'm therefore interested in hearing from him uh, and, and how he intends to work with the federal counterparts to ease some of the issues of the Puerto Rican Police Department when we have uh, our witnesses. Finally, I understand that a focus on the drug trade in the Caribbean may be confusing for some, given the need for resources in our communities at home to fight the same problems. That being said, today's hearing and others like it uh, that look into the trade routes in other areas like West Africa are needed to adequately com combat drug violence and addiction. I thank the witnesses for their attendance and look forward to hearing from both panels on how to increase our efforts and better position the safety and security of Puerto Rico uh, and the Virgin Islands. And Mr. Chairman, furthermore, uh, uh, Governor uh, John DeJong of the U.S. Virgin Islands was invited to testify today alongside side, uh, the Governor Fortuna. However, uh, because of his other commitments, he wasn't able to attend. And I have uh, in my possession 
a record testimony that he'd like to submit, and I'd like to ask unanimous consent that this be placed in the record. Without objection, so ordered. Thank you.